Welcome to the first video of the VHDL with micro learning series. In this series, I'm going to show you quick tips which will only take a few minutes to implement. And the first tip which I have for you today is about reading entity outputs in VHDL. This is my Fibonacci sequence number generator and forgive me if I pronounced Fibonacci incorrectly. I don't speak Italian. If you do, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, this module will generate the Fibonacci sequence on the num output and the way that it works is that on each rising edge of the clock this code gets run and we store the previous value of the num output and we assign to the num output the current value plus the previous value so this is the Fibonacci generator and there are two problems with this code one is that this num output will overflow because it's a natural but I'm just going to pretend that it doesn't just so that we can keep this example nice and neat. The more apparent problem is that we are reading from this output and writing to it, but it's an output on the entity. And this is not allowed in VHDL. If we try to compile it, we get this problem. You cannot read output num because it's an output. And I'm going to show you three ways to fix this. The last one is the one I prefer. But the easiest way to fix this is to just change out to in out. So now this is an input and an output at the same time, and we are allowed to read and write to it. So if I save this first and go and compile it now, it's going to compile, it's going to work. But I don't prefer this method because this reveals to the outside of this module what's happening on the inside. And if we, for example, make a component declaration and instantiate this module, it's not apparent if this is supposed to be an input or an output. Another way is to change this one to buffer, which is a different mode. It's almost the same as in out, but the buffer type uh, entity signal can't be written from the outside. So we can read and write to it from the inside of the module, but the outside can change the input. But I don't prefer this method either because some synthesis tools have problems with the buffer mode and also it reveals something about the inside of this module. I just want to have in and out. I don't want to know how what's happening inside of the module when I'm instantiating this one on the outside. So I'm going to show you the last way which I always use, which is the one I prefer. That's to make a shadow copy of this output which is being read. We're going to do that now signal num and I'm for example going to give it the name underscore i for internal it's going to be a natural same as the output so it has to be a copy of this signal and then down here we're going to assign to num the real output the value of the shadow signal so we are assigning to the real output now the value of this new signal and then here, I'm going to select all of these num outputs, dun, 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 like that, and I'm going to change them to num i. So now we are using this num i internally here, but at the top we are assigning to the output. So now we can read this one like a normal signal inside of this module, but it's still an output. You see, it's an output. We can save this now and go and compile it in MoleSim, and it works. We can compile everything, see if we can run this test page, test page, wave, see the waveform. And there we go, we have the Fibonacci sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 13, and so on. Thank you for watching this micro learning video. If you want more free articles and tutorials, Go to vhdlwiz.com and you can also find the link in the description of this video.